Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name is Colwyn Way. We have Ben behind the cameras doing all the trickery and the question asking and things like that. So if you have any questions, don't forget that, put it in the chat and Ben will then feed them through and we'll do our best to answer them if we can. Today's quite a nice one. I'm fully allowed now to embrace the Christmas um, projects so we can as makers start making them and selling them or giving them and all those sorts of things. So I'm allowed to mention that word, which is great. Um, and it's not the last time we're going to do it in the next month. There's going to be a few times as well. Um, next week, of course, though, I'm back with um, with Steph. We're doing part two of the um, the uh, spindle work. So remember, we started that a, a few weeks ago. But no, Christmas, proper, proper Christmas. Now, I keep saying I want to do nutcrackers, I want to do smokers, and all those sorts of things. And I keep being told by everyone around me in our little Axminster bubble here, you've done that too many times, so think of something else. So... I'm I'm sort of mixing this up with a, an article that I'm I've done for Wood Turning Magazine, which will be going out in no uh, sorry the end of November, um, and it's one of the fully fledged Christmas uh, projects. So it's this little, in fact, called a little rider. So Rita Line, I think it is, all the German speaking and German uh, people out there. If uh, if I've pronounced that wrong, I do apologise. Um, but Rita Line, I think it's pronounced, and it just translates to Little Rider. So I've done it as a nutcracker riding uh, riding a little rocking horse. So I have shoehorned in a nutcracker, not with a mechanism or anything like that, but all the lovely features of our, our regular um, nutcrackers. So this is one of, the, one of our projects. It's very much a German traditional um, uh, Christmas decoration. And I say Christmas decoration, they tend to come out of Christmas, but if you go to the um, Erzgebirge region, so that eastern part of, of Germany, down near Obenhausen and those areas, then you'll see these all through the year um, and sold all through the year as well. So wonderful place to go and visit, as I keep saying. Um, but yeah, well, I want to, to make one of these with you. Obviously, we're not going to decorate. We've got around about an hour to do this in. So I want to show you how to make this um, from scratch. And then it's down to you to do the painting and all those sorts of things, to have the fun bits, as it were. And you can take those inside in the warm, away from the workshop, if your workshop is, is or in the UK anyway, uh, anything like mine, nice and cold and damp. Um, you can take it in the warm to do all the decorating. So there's quite a few bits, um, and most of them um, turned. There are a few little flat bits that we're going to look at doing, things like the horse head, the peak, um, the, the, the legs down here. But most of them are turned. Um, so we're going to start straight away. We're going to turn the main base for this one, which is um, a, a nice little arc, a round piece, which, of course, we're going to do out of two pieces. So I'm going to pop that one um, out of harm's way just for the minute. We'll have a look at that um, when we finish. But look, what I've got here, and I've already prepped this, um, and now understanding and knowing that timber of this size, and this is eight inches across, about two, 200 mil across, to buy timber of this side would be extremely expensive and unnecessary. Because we're going to split it through the middle anyway, the best thing for you to do would be to get your four-inch stock or, or um, 100 mil stock and glue it together. The, the sizes I'm giving you aren't precise. They can be tweaked and, and changed slightly. So 100 mil is fine. Glued together, 200 mil. So that's what we're going to do. And then once we finish, we're going to cut it in half. We've got one half of, of our process. Um, of course, you don't need to do that. If you're not a turner, um, then you can do the other. So what I've got here, this is just a piece of bandsaw cut. So I put it through my thickness, sur sorry, surface planer first, then thickness it to size. Um, same with this edge. And then I use the bandsaw to cut the arc in it. And then, of course, disc sander to sand that flat if you want to. So you don't have to turn that. It's entirely up to you. You might decide, even if you are a turner, you might decide, oh, it's just a lot easier doing it that way and quicker. Um, your your choice up to you completely um so what i've got here we're going to turn the outside i'm not going to go to the, the band so i do have uh, one over here that i prepared earlier anyway so we're going to go through the process uh like i say start to finish yes ben we've got our first question i think yeah so first question from attila they're asking is that just pine stock Cohen? it is yeah a bit of softwood and the reason being i'm going to paint it um, you can use anything, scraps of timber in the in the in the workshop if you want to. But because these are heavily decorated, um, then there's there's no need to to go for expensive timber. Just get sort of fairly plain timber. You could even use building quality pine if you wanted to, rather than the, your joinery grade. This is joinery grade, a little bit denser, um, nicer to work with. But you could use anything. To be quite honest, old scaffold boards would work quite well. Um, they don't have to be pre like precise, like I say. And I say about decorating, you don't have to 
It's like nutcrackers. If you wanted to use the color of timber to as your as your uh, paint palette, then do that instead. And you might want to go different color timbers to do different parts of the of the build. So entirely up to you. These are intended to be painted, and the main base of these are white. So the horse is going to be white. You could do black horse if you want to. Um, the idea came from a show that I'd done way back. So I've, I keep harping on about visiting Germany and my love for everything German in terms of Christmas decorations and stuff. But I'd done um, or, or attended and demonstrated at a show back in 2017. And, and we had a, a memorative T-shirt like you do at most of these things. Um, and there was a picture of a little rider in as their emblem on the, the T-shirt. And I've always thought that that would be a good project to do one day. And that's where we're coming from with this one. Um, so as I said, end of November, you'll see um, this in Wood Turning Magazine. Um, in fact, the one that I showed you was the one that I made for the, the magazine. So I'm just going to show you how to go through that. Um, go get the magazine when it comes out, because again, you're going to have that in stages. So just reinforce what we're doing here as well. Um, so I'm going to first of all turn this disc. So lay speed is zero, turn the machine on uh, at nice slow speed. Nothing's touching the tool rest there, so I can start the machine up. Because these surfaces have been planed already, I don't need really to do much to them. However, we're going to sand them gently. So I'm going to sort this outside edge, then we'll sand it, then we'll sort the face, sorry, sand the faces, turn it over, and away we go. So I'm going to use a, a gouge with that one. I'm using a 3.8 gouge here, turning it around about 1,000 revs. Make sure your glue bond is good, okay? Um, I'm using a... a, a um, a tight bond, this particular one's a tight bond too, so it's sort of like a PVA glue really, and I've allowed it plenty of time to, to glue, I've done this, um, I actually glued these up yesterday, and the glue bond can be a good one because you're going to band saw the piece in two afterwards. So you might choose that you don't want to do this. You might want to go straight to the bands or just cut the arc rather than gluing them. That's absolutely fine. There is no rules or laws or anything like that. Now I'm just going to have a very slight arc on this. So rather than make it dead flat, just a very slight arc. I just find it looks a little bit better. And you can cheat as well because if you just leave these to rock, certainly the design that I've made... Um, it's a little bit top heavy and they will rock over, fall over. So I put a little bit of a flat on mine so they stand still on this on the shelf or the mantelpiece. There we are. Just checking for any rounds or any nasties that I don't want there. All good. So we're going to start sanding this. Now I'm going to sand not to a high finish here. I'm going to paint over the top of this. So I'm going to leave it fairly coarse for a key. Um, remember, if you are going to sand, uh, sorry, if you are going to leave them as timber, you will need to sand to a good finish. So let's go. I'm going to start with 100 and probably end up only on 240. So not going to go any further than that. And what this is doing really is just taking out any tears that there may be, any nasties, just leveling everything down. Round those corners over nicely. Cleaning up the face, there is a little bit of glue spillage there. But as long as it's nice and clean, I'm happy. That was 100 grit, so let's go to 150. A little bit of 240. Let's just stop and have a have a, another little look of that one. That looks pretty good. Before I turn that dust extraction off, you can see that front face a minute. So what I'm going to do now that's nice and clean. Let's just turn this over because we've got one clean face. We just need to do the same on the other side.
And just to clean this area up. That's a 150 that we're using there. So now on to the 240. There we are, a little bit of glue there. So I could sound for a little bit longer uh, if I wanted to. I'm not going to, I'm going to crack on. So I'm going to turn the dust extraction off just for a little while, um, but we are going to need it again. I just want to show you our holding method, this nice screw chuck. And I've drilled an eight millimeter hole all the way through this piece to enable us to use the screw chuck here with a little bit of packer just to spread the, the load a little bit as well. Um, so that would be that piece done. Nice, nicely finished. Once you've done that, then you're going to go to the band saw. Um, and I would definitely recommend a band saw, not a table saw for this. It's a little bit too close to your fingers with a table saw. But then cut back down, put a rule and a pencil line across there, cut back down that glue line. So what you'll end up with, two pieces that are nicely finished on the edge and on these faces, just this to clean up. Now, I did worry about this uh, mark to start with. You don't need to because the little rider actually sits over that and his legs come down. And so that's completely covered that area. So it's unnecessary to, to, to worry about it. So I want to show you what we're going to do with that piece next. Uh, whilst I'm just changing things over, let's go for another question, Ben. Hi, Cohen. So we've got a couple of questions come in. Um, first one from Terry. He's asking about, um, uh, do you have any idea about when your Nutcracker book's coming out? Um, there's a few things, Terry. I know I've been telling everybody that it's going to be <coughs> ready this side of Christmas. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't think, it, well, I do apologize. I don't think it's going to be now. I've had a few things uh, happen, exciting things happen that I will start to tell you about as they start to um, come to fruition. But um, it's mean it's meant that I've been traveling a lot and I'm really, really busy again and I'm just not getting to it at the moment. Um, and to be honest, it should be done by now if I was going to get it out for this side of Christmas. I'm hoping things might quieten down a little bit in, in uh, January, February. Um, but I think it's going to be early part of next year now it's not going to be this side of christmas sorry and a question from nigel he's asking um he's seen that you've got a new workshop and was just asking about where it might be it's one of those exciting things that i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> um we're in the middle of um the build at the moment so we're, we're just finishing it off it's uh in axminster on the outskirts of axminster at a place called miller's farm shop um and I'm one of several buildings, or mine is one of several buildings being put up, but a nice wooden uh, workshop being installed, um, hoping to be in mid to late November. So, uh, yeah, in Axminster, mid to late November, probably start teaching January, February. Uh, I will put loads of information out on my own website um, and, and social media when that happens. Um, and Axminster is really being really, really cool. And, um, and amazingly supportive and um, putting me forward as a recommended training facility. So I will start shouting from the rafters when it's all there and ready and I've got dates to, to share with you. At the moment, we're just on that build. Hence no Nutcracker book. Really, really sorry. <laughs> okay, so we know what we're doing here. This is a sanding disc with a nice platform, lay speed is zero before you turn the lathe on, we'll have dust extraction. So I'm gonna pick the one, uh, where is he? That one, oh, one of these, one of these that, that I've cut in half already. So we've sanded this one fully, cut him in half. All you're gonna do now is just with a little bit of care, just sand that face, dust extraction, sand that last remaining face. Now, don't be tempted to go over there because what will happen, that will come up. So make sure you do this. Then you can flip. If you have a belt sander, brilliant. You can do the whole length on a belt sander. If you have a, a disc like this, just do what I'm doing. Eventually, you'll get there. Now, 
there we are and i think that is is about it all right remember this hole's going to be covered what i would do to that now is just with a bit of abrasive just again sand these edges we want nice soft edges for all of this so just sand both of those there we are so we have our first bit now one thing i will say the next stage on for that so once you get to that stage into your vice you go and we're going to drill an angled hole in there so that is a little angle if i put a bit of dowel in there i'll show you the sort of angle that we've got there we are so it gives you a sort of an angle so that's going to be for the tail in a moment okay and i'll show you how to do that but make sure you have that in the in a vice um, not just rested because we've now got um, a way for it to move so drilling um, your hands will be in the way if you're drilling with a, um, a cordless drill or something so make sure that that's in a vice to drill it there we are I'll turn that noise off just for a minute so we've got our nice stable base okay nice little arc there stable base ready to start thinking about the horse head the rider itself um, and the tail okay so let's go upwards let's start with the the main body of our little rider <clears throat> and that's so we're going to keep with the same timber so i'm going to go with this nice joinery grade of of softwood um, and this first bit here is going to be the body and the head together so unlike the nutcrackers if i can just get the figure back out again unlike the nutcrackers um where i tend to go the head um hat and body as three separate pieces for this character, I'm, I'm making the body and the head all in one piece, and then the hats are separate, okay? So that whole section there, that's what we're about to turn. I'm going to keep getting him out as reference, so come back to him. So first thing I need to do, let's uh, rough down to a cylinder, so be a little bit more accurate than I am when, when it comes to your centering. Let's just do this the speed. There we go. I'm going to go to a couple of tailstock centers or tailstock center and a, a drive. I'm running out of room. I've got so much stuff around me, timber and, and things. So let's go for a fairly big drive in that end. I'll go for a ring center up in this end. Okay, so that's our next task is to round down to a cylinder so we can get all the basic tools out. And when I say basic, the, the standard tools, you know, roughing gouges and skew chisels and spindle gouges, all those sorts of things, things that we, we get as beginners and starter kits and all those sorts of things. Yes, Ben, question? Um, question here from Jenny Cohen. Um, can a disc sander give you smooth or flat enough surface for preparing involuted turning, or is it advisable to have a planar thickness? Sir? Involuted turning, so inside out turning, I'm guessing you, you, you would mean. Um, if you're talking inside out turning, if it was small enough um, piece of turning, yes. Um, but if it, you're going to bigger pieces, then no, you need, you need to um, surface plane um, because that will ensure that they're fully, you know, fully matching size. Um, a disc sand is okay, um, but for this sort of size work, it's fine. But as soon as you start going too long, then then no, you you won't. You, you most of the time you get bias sanding, um, so you just got to be careful of those things, really. All right. Um, okay, so lathe speed is zero. Turn the lathe on. I'm turning in now about sixteen hundred down to a cylinder. that's about right that's about right i will start giving you dimensions but we've got the vlog to support this um this video is going to have a, a little um, line drawing of all of the dimensions of the pieces so that will be available on our blog on our how-to section of the website um 
Okay, so that's 100 mil. I started off with 75, but it's going to be a little bit smaller by the time I finish. It's going to be down to about 70. Okay. And now we're going to get the skew working. So I want three sections done. I want a belt loop. I want a head. So let's tidy up this end grain first. And you can do that with a skew or parting tool, whichever's more comfortable for you. Um, in both sides are going to be partially covered. This head is going to be completely covered by the hat and the peak. And the underside is going to be partially covered by the body of the rocker. So there we are. I'm going to part down there. But now I'm going to go to the skew. And I'm just going to cleanly cut the underside. Remember, this is partially covered, not fully. And the skew will give me a much better finish than the parting tool would. There we are. Gives me a nice clean finish on the underside. Now the the head and belt loop. So all I'll do is I'll just raise that tool rest. I'm going to give myself a nice clean cut. Do that there. Come back from the other way. Head. Nice V cut. Then we're going to roll over. So the bottom of the head can be a little bit biased. So you can have a slightly tighter curve down the bottom here where the cheek should be and a slightly longer one going toward the, the peak of the hat. Be right with you, Ben. There we are, down to the peak. And... One more cut and a couple of rolls. This is the peak. Oh, sorry, this is the belt loop. So perfect. Little little um, quarter inch, six mil beading and parting tool that was. So this is now the waist we're bringing in. down to that little belt loop, tidy up that bottom, slightly bigger V here. So when you paint that area that I'm just cutting now is going to have the teeth, the bottom set of teeth um, decorated onto it. Yes, Ben. Um, so a question here from Chris. Um, they're asking if there is if there is an easy way for a novice to get the cylinder an even diameter all the way along. Um, measure. That's the, the, the easiest thing. So get yourself a, a set of calipers, a um, set of calipers like that, so external calipers, set them to the size that you want, and use a beading and parting tool, or parting tool even, to cut both sides and the center, and then you can taper to it. Sorry, then you can cut to it whether you're using a rough and gouge or whether you're using a skew chisel. If you've got three places of reference, it gives you much, uh, it's a much easier place to cut to. And then, of course, a little bit of abrasive around a flat, straight edge of a, a sacrificial piece of timber and sand to them. That will give you a nice flat finish on here. But to be honest, if we're talking this figure, that doesn't need it. You can you get roughly there, get almost in the right place, and, and that'd be fine. Yes, Ben. And then Maria's asking, uh, would it be a good idea to burn uh, a wire in each body section um, and that will stop the paint from bleeding over? Yeah, definitely. So what I tend to do, Maria, on the face or the heads, um, is to keep those, the timber, um, which is quite a traditional thing to do. So you, you actually see the, the color of the timber and then paint the facial features on top of that. But no, you're dead right. Um, when it comes to the body, on all the, all the nutcrackers I tend to do is mask and spray. Now, most graffiti art sprays don't don't bleed, but when you come to using um, uh, stains and things, they will. So, yeah, a, a burnt line will, will obviously stop that from happening. I cheat quite a lot as well. So when it comes to here, I'll roughly mask around the face, spray, 
and then I'll put it back on the lathe and just do a little with a little gold sharpie or gold marker or something like that. Do the top here, and then a black sharpie for the belt loop. So you're actually using a fine felt tip rather than a paint on those areas, and that works so much better. Um, so yeah, you can get away with a few things that way. And then um, vinyl vinyl dots for eyes. Um, you can do the main white section of the of the eye by paint. Um, and then use vinyl dots decreasing in size, so a blue, a black, and then a little dab of white at the end to get your eyes just so. It's just an easier way of working. I My my painting is nowhere near um, as good as I want it to be, so I have to cheat a few in a few ways. So that can come off now. We're going to go back to spindle turning in a moment, but I just want to finish that, that head so we can start setting it up onto our little rocking area. So we go back... And I obviously haven't sanded that, um, but you're going to need to sand it. Once you've finished sanding, then you can go to the disc again. So put our chucks back on. Over to the disc. A bit, again, about a thousand revs for a disc sander. Dust extraction on, and we'll just clean those areas up. But just be a little bit careful when you're doing this, not to biasly sand anywhere in particular. So you can see what I'm taking away. It's just that little disc there. So. making sure that I'm not sanding any of the edges away heavier on one side than the other. There. Now remember, if there are any blemishes right in the middle, that doesn't matter. That's going to be, um, it's going to be hidden um, by the rocker itself. This is going to be covered up. So all I need to do with this area is make sure that that little nib in the middle is below the outside surface of edge. So it all fits together nicely. Yeah, that's fine. So that, that would be finished. Pretending that we've sanded the outside already, but that would be done. And then ready to put on to our rider as the next part of the build okay so let's do whilst we're talking on the rider we're going to do peak and hat now the peak i've already prepped everything that i'm making here today has got templates um including the horse head unfortunately i've left the horse head template at home but i've got everything else there's my peak template okay which is a little bit of fomex the leg template which is a sacrifice sacrificial bit of um, old plywood and i've used um, plywood for the horse head template as well um, but for the the peak birch ply so birch ply or model makers plywood really um, is another name for it and birch ply is just a, a good high quality grade of plywood doesn't have the voids in that you get from some of the cheaper plies this is quarter inch or six mil um, and i tend to use that for all the peaks it's just easy to to work you can see there's no voids or anything within it it's a nice a nice plywood um you can use um so dowel to hold these together i do that with my normal nutcrackers um and it just centers everything up also so a little hole in the top um and that's our peak so that one's already made so that's going to go on top of our head and i'll show you all together in a moment so the next thing will be to make the peak of the hat. Now the peak of the hat here is from the same dimension bit of timber that we were using the, uh, for the body. So it starts at 75. And we're going to taper this down in two ways. We're going to taper it down toward the peak. And then I'm going to slant the top of the head as well, uh, top of the hat as well. Just to give it a little bit of um, a slightly different look. Yes, Ben. Frederick's asking, uh, what would you recommend as a primer on the wood? i.e. the sanding sealer or a relevant undercoat color yeah so if i mean there's nothing stopping you on these figures from actually using just regular decorating paint um these aren't toys these are these are to stand on the the um the mantelpiece they are decorations um so we can use regular paint okay so you, whether you use an undercoat first 
um, or a regular um, timber primer before you then go for a, I would go satin rather than gloss, but that's your your call um, over the top of it. Um, you'll have a hole on this one, remember, because you've got a hole for the um, for the tail to go in. So you, a little bit of dowel in there, that'll be your paint stick. So it keeps you hands free whilst you're painting the rest of the body. Okay. Um, or that one that you just saw, the finished one that I've got there, that was um, the graffiti art spray, the Cobra paints that I tend to go with. So graffiti art paint, and that was sprayed on in that case. Um, and that was just a sanding sealer underneath that. All right. And with a single coat as well. So yeah, you've got lots of options. You'd, it's normal wood, sort of wood paints um, work really, really well. Okay. So the, the top of the, the hat, just a very, very simple bit of turning this bit. Just between centers, rough down to cylinder, skew cut or spindle gouge or bowl gouge, whatever you want to use to get the finishing cut. Making sure everything misses the tool rest before you turn the lathe on. Turning it around about 1600 on this size of blank. Down the cylinder first. And then just a little taper. That's quite a rough finish, so we're going to go away from the rough and gouge over to a skew. Don't have to touch this surface. This surface is going to be sanded at a, a little bit of an angle in a moment, so I'm not worried about that. Tool rest goes up because we're using the skew chisel. Just a taper, clean up this underside, either with skew or parting tool. And again, you'd sand, sand before that comes off the lathe. But there, just a little bit of a chamfered angle on that one. We may as well do that now, get everything put together whilst we're working. So, so far, really, really simple. Again, I would sort of call this a weekend project. Maybe you want to do a couple at a time. You're going to have two um, arcs anyway for the bases, and so maybe do a couple at a time. They look good as a match set on the on the mantelpiece. Maybe change the colours up. There we are. Dust extraction can go on again. And I'm just to start. We're just going to clean the underside up. Take away that that little area here. This looks nice and neat. Then you can start thinking about the angle on here. Now this does take a little while. So whether I can get this done, I'll just put a slight angle on for you. Little, little glimmer there of a bad 
you can put your your power sanding pad in the lathe and use that just to clean up all of these little areas, soften the edges, that sort of thing. What um, grit is there on that abrasive, Colin? On that one's, I think, that's a 100. Let's have a look. 80. 80. That's an 80. There we are. So there's a little little peak. Oh. Pop this on our figure. Things come to life when you start putting the headgear on. So long taper at the front. There we are. So you can start to see what we're going with, where we're we going with. Obviously, the, the smoker really comes to life. Smoker? The um, little rider comes to life when you put a nose on it. Nice big round nose on these figures. They look really, really cool with that. So there we are. We're starting to build the character. So let's go on to the arms next. Really nice bit of um, skew work. Nice bit of turning the arms. Nice small um, blanks, about 25 mil, about an inch. So we'll go to a slightly smaller drive center. Prepped up. Same material. So I'm not changing anything in terms of material. The material is still the same. We're going to go much faster now. So let's go with ring centers. So friction ring center in the headstock. And the same profile in the tail sock, but on a bearing. So on a, 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 live, a live center instead. And again, you could spend a bit more time with your accuracy centering up on just for speed, just dabbing with the rattle. I'm going to go right up in speed. I want to be turning at about 2,000 revs for these little pieces. And we've got things to think of. Shoulder pads. We've got little hands to put on our figure. But all very basic shapes. Cuffs, of course. Things to embellish. Things to decorate. Two thousand revs. We're rough down to our cylinder first. Use whatever you want to rough down. You can go roughing gouge, bowl gouge, spindle gouge, skew chisel. So let's do the hands. So let's go little wrist area here, rolling over the top of the hand. Then down towards the fingers, down to the front. And again, you can sand these into a little flat, flat shape cuff. And then we go shoulder pads up here. You will need to create some waste because you're going to take out the, the marks left by the centers up here, you see. There we are. Then sand down to a finish. So quite a nice little simple piece of turning that. But now we're going to make our second one. Hopefully match. Close-ish. Close-ish. These aren't quite as... It's not quite as important to get these matching as it is a stood up, sand into attention nutcracker. Because with a nutcracker, they're literally positioned next to each other. Um, with these, they're hidden. And they're beside the horse head and the body of the thing. So you can get away with a bit more on these. But we'll get them as close as we can. Down the cylinder. Round over the top of the hand. Taper down toward the fingers. And 
And we'll do the cuff. Shoulder pad. Clean up and prepare for the waist. That'll definitely do us. That can come away. I want to show you one more bit of bit of sanding. I know I'm mixing this around and I'm swapping between between center working and then um, and then putting a, a face plate on and, and all those sorts of things. But it's quite important. Um, normally, I think as you know, I'd be doing a, a few of these at a time. Um, but you may not choose to do that, so it's quite important to to work all these bits separately. So what I would do to these now, I, I'd certainly get after I've done the main sanding by hand and then on disc. I then definitely go to a power sanding pad, put that in the chuck, so I can go then through the grades. I can travel right the way up through to 800 grit if I wanted to. Then, but just the basic sanding is going to be. Tidying up the top of the shoulder, just taking out that waist and, and the hole that that uh, centre would have would have given me. There we are, and then we're going to put a flat on the hand, make it a little bit more lifelike. So we get that sort of profile. So it's a little bit more hand light than just that round. Same on our other one. So we've got our two, two arms there. Does leave a fairly good finish as well on the, on the ends. But it can be improved, like I say, with a little bit more uh, work. Let's put our little rider up on a platform just to show you where we are so far. So if I put the platform up, well done, Ben, thank you. So we've got our platform, tail still to be made. And then we'll have our little rider up there. And now we can start thinking about the arms. So if I, there we are. Let's, let's go to camera number one, Ben, if you would. There we go. So you can see we've got the peak. The arms are now going on, so we're we're pretty much there. We've got to do things, or well, two main things really: the horse head and the tail. So back to the back to the horse itself. The tail's quite a nice one. You can just leave it round if you want to. Here's one that I made earlier, and the little round. Obviously, the tenons a different size tenon than that one. But again, back to number three. Um, just a round piece. I'm going to have the horse tail sort of flopping over. So we're going to do a similar thing and then sand it to shape. Um, and whilst we've got the sound on, we're also going to look at the horse head. So, which is the best camera? If I can just take that off of there a minute. Show you where we start with the horse head. Like I said, I've completely forgotten um, my little template, which is just a piece of plywood um, to mark these out. And I'll tell you what I've done here. I'm not a great artist or anything. I went straight to um, straight online, and I just simply put in um, horse head um, silhouette. And there's a hundreds of hundreds of silhouettes. I printed one off and I copied that, um, and uh, and that's what I ended up with. And there's quite a nice one. It's quite a realistic one, even though you know when we finish with it, it's going to look a little bit more cartoony. Um, so that's 
on several pieces and then I'll cut out several several horse heads ready to be sanded to shape. Okay, so I keep saying it's simple, but it's a lot easier than I first thought it was going to be. Let's put it that way. So we'll grab one of those horse heads and make that horse shaped ish. And whilst we've got the sander up here, let's just have a look at one more thing. The, the legs, again, I'm using ply for this. You could, I suppose, split turn the legs as well. But there we are. There's the template drawing around the ply in the same way we did the peak. And so I've ended up with that. There's still to be sanded, and we're going to do that in a moment. I've got to round over the boot, clean up all these faces, um, and then they literally just get stuck on with a little bit of um, epoxy glue. You can see those. I've got a little boot line across there as well. It's a nice, easy thing. It covers up that hole that we held um, the, the main bit on with as well. Okay, so fairly slim. Uh, yes, Ben, got a question. Um, so slightly off topic from phil here he's selling selling at craft markets regarding table lamps wired or unwired which way would you go wired or on table lamps i think they have to be wired don't they i don't know i suppose you can get like battery pack led type ones now okay or... yeah 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 personally um and personally I, I would always go wide um but it's just me that's just the sort of things that i make if you wanted to go um, battery ones or you know that sort of thing then then please do if you're worried about pat testing and stuff like that there's plenty of places that you can take your, your pieces to to get them checked over um, before you put them on the cell because that is a requirement you must make sure that's done you want to keep everybody safe and alive um, so you can go and get them tested um, to make sure what your work has been done properly or you get someone professional to fit the lamps up um before you sell them you know so th that does have to be done correctly but don't worry about that there's plenty of people that will charge you good money to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah phil's just commented there's more regulations and stuff yeah you know yeah. as a electrical uh, yeah thing. absolutely you just got to make sure that a, a qualified or competent person um is the person that's wiring up and that's the thing and then this might be a bit of an in-joke um from ward he's asking when's fluffy coming to teach Steph? I'm not sure you. <laughs> um, so I think we're talking about Mark there. Oh, I think. Okay. Yeah, Mark. And we we have to arrange that. I think it'll be in the new year at some point. But yeah, we we've certainly got it on the on the cards to do. So that will be happening. Let's get the basics done first before we um, unleash uh, Mark on her. So yeah. Um, okay, let's do the legs first. They're the easiest bits to do. We'll have dust extraction running. Then we're going to go over to the head, and then finally I'll make the tail. If you are wondering who Mark is, anybody, um, Mark Beckett, gentleman Wood Turner. Um, I mean, is he on there at the moment, Ben? No, I haven't seen him. Though. I'm sure if he is, he'll soon make himself known. So all we're doing is sanding to our lines. Nice and clean. little bit of hand sanding when you're done just to take away any any um sort of ragged edges that sort of thing but that is as simple or as hard as it becomes two of those obviously okay so the horse head itself so what we'll do here we're going to do all the external convex curves then we'll go over to the um the bobbin sander to do the others so let's clean them up first Good. Now 
Okay, so that's done. Now we can start just cleaning up the face. So I'll take the, the table away from that. I just want to clean that face up. Good. All right, now we can start thinking about the shape of it. Okay, so that's basically just chamfering the corners. We'll show camera in a minute as well. Okay, so, so far we have that. Now we're going to do a little bit more work. We're going to put the bobbin sander back on now and start shaping in the tops also. And just one, one thing I've spotted is just this little area. Better. Okay, bobbin sander. Now we can start thinking about all these concave areas here. Let me go up a little bit in speed. So we're starting to get, and if I can turn that dust extraction off, we'll talk about that a little bit. We're starting to get that nice little horse shape. Okay, I'm just going to drop that stand out of the way so we can get the other finished one in. But we're not trying to carve a horse head. You know, that's that's all we're doing is we're relieving um, the the bulk of the, the material just so we can get that sort of suggestion. One thing I will do once both sides are done is just with a file, the diamond file, just file in the top of the ears. If I can get the finished one to show you again, um, and maybe we go to that number three, Ben. Um, lovely. So you can see on the top of this one, we've got that little profile. It's just a V cut. That's all it is. And um, we don't have to worry too much about the eyes. They're just dotted on. 
Um, and there's plenty of, of representations of this online if you wanted to get have a look. Um, but you can see what we're doing. Uh, where did I put it? You can see what we're doing. We're just suggesting that horse shape, even with a little cheek that's coming up around here. I'm just sanding that into that profile. Um, and it just slims the whole thing down. It takes that bulkiness away um, and gives you more of a horse shape. Yes, Ben. Um, so first question from Chris. Um, the 80 grit looks fairly aggressive. Uh, once again, for a novice, would it be better off to kind of uh, go with like a 100 grit um, to reduce the chance of making a mistake? Yeah, you can do. The only thing I would say, especially if you're working with softwood like this, is be careful not to burn what you're um, cutting or what you're sanding because that will clog up quite quickly, especially on this very resinous timber. Um, and then you get those black streaks and things. So just be a little bit careful of that. Maybe just take the, the lay speed down a little bit and touch softer um, rather than being aggressive like I was being there. And I was only doing that just because I didn't want to take too long for you. But, yeah, the harder you press, the more aggressive it's going to cut. And the faster you, you um, rotate, it's the same thing, the more aggressive it's going to be. Um, and then Emma's asking, where, where can you find the plans for this? There are none at the moment. I mean, I, I researched it and I started with a picture. I mean, I have found no plans to make these. Um, who knows in the future, there may be some plans, maybe mm -hmm. next year or so. Um, certainly, I had thought about putting this in um, uh, in a book with the Nutcrackers. Um, we do a blog so where I've literally, uh, we take in um, this figure from pictorial um, uh uh, sections and i've written a bit about it so um it, go online go on to our the, the atmos tools website if you go on to is it called the knowledge still or is it how to's ben yeah it's in the um how to project ideas project place. ideas yeah have a look at that and you'll see that that there uh, but also wood turning magazine at the end of november that's going to have a whole article that i wrote on on making that one as well so yeah have a look those two sources should give you instruction pictorial instructions from from what we're doing here and then we've got Debbie and Terry uh, kind of asking a similar question. So Debbie's asking, do we stock the bobbin sanders? And Terry's asking, yes. um, do we sell the bobbin sanders as a set in different sizes? Yes, we do. That was just two out of a set of four um, that, uh, well, that I own. Um, I've got the box over there, but they're in a nice wooden box. Um, and uh, let, I will put the answer beneath this video actually no, i haven't done it at the moment but we'll add to it we'll add that uh, that part number um but yeah um they're not called bob and sanders what do we call them um drum sanders well done ben drum sanders are a nice little wooden box um and yeah so set of four okay um that was just the medium sized one so the one i used was this one here and then they go up to 75 mil as well and there's two smaller sizes also really really you as a wood turner really really useful things because they hold in rc jaws right in the center and you can use the tail stock single point tail stock because they do have a little center hole in the other the other end that you can grip okay so you can hold between centers as well perfect perfect Okay, where was I? One more piece to do, and that's the little tail. We're going to look at, at sanding that over. So we'll start between centers. Same timber. I'm using that throughout, but you could use a feature timber if you wanted to and have a you know, a nice bit of wood for the tail. Entirely up to you. Um, I've already drilled the hole. We're going to work to that one that I drilled earlier. Can't remember what that hole size was. Whatever drill bit you have to hand to create the tenon. Um, let's go friction drive. And, and ring center. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit of a, run a little bit over on this one. There we are, nice and quick. So we're going to be cutting it around about 2,000 revs. There we go. And skew, I think. Round over the top.
just use whatever you feel more at home with. You don't want to use a skew. You don't need to. Um, let's get my set of divide, uh, calipers set to the hole that we need to make a tenon for. So this is just going to be glued in when you finish. And it's just a little finishing touch. Okay, that'll do. And of course, sand. You know, sand this profile before we sand the back profile. Now, before I sand that shape, let's just check to make sure that's going to fit in there might need a little bit of persuasion yeah that will fit a little bit tight but it will fit now we'll sand that one to shape so back with our Good old reliable SK114 and the sanding disc. Dust extraction, dust extraction can go back on. About a thousand revs. There we are, just a little bit of a touch up with some abrasive, just to tidy it up a little bit. But that gives us a nice little, little sort of tilting tail shape. Pop it in our figure. There we are, facing back. We've got a nice little tail back there. Let's get everything put together. We can go on to number one camera there, Ben. I'll put the platform up and we'll build our character. Now, in terms of the arms, I'm always, again, like all the other figures that I, I like to build, I, I, I build them with Dow. So as well as um, gluing together, the arms will need to be glued on um, or drilled and then the holes, uh, then the arms drilled and then everything attached with, with Dow. But there so far... Needs a little bit of flat put on the bottom just to stop them from tilting over. Or our rider move back a wee bit. There we go. And then nose is really important. But also the arms. They're going to be at an angle. I don't know what I'm doing that for. So they're going to be at an angle coming out this way. All right. There we are. Our little rider. Really, really cute. That's probably 50% of the job done. We still got a lot of decorating to do now. So um, that for me, that's the enjoyable bit. Once we've got the build done, we can start decorating and making him look making him look authentic. So let's get our finished one out. This is what you're going to end up with. We'll talk briefly about this. So we a bit, few bits we haven't done yet. We haven't done the nose, which gives character to the piece. 
um, and we haven't put all the embellishments on. So this is Sharpie. So the the, the actual face itself, all the what would be leather um, tack going around the the head, is all done with a pen. Um, it's just easier than a brush I found. Um, copper nails, leather for the reins, and then I've just uh, I've just raided um, Hobby Lobby or um, Hobby. What's the other one? What's the British one? The English one? Hobby Craft. That's the one. Yeah. Um, for all these little glittery um, sticky bits and things like that. But have fun with it. Um, and Tiny Turner, Emma Cook. If you want to get any of the hair for the for your figures for your Nutcrackers. Gonk hair is what uh, I buy it as, and Emma has a huge range of of um, little pre-cut uh, blanks for that. So yeah, visit her site as well. But there we are. There's our little rider or Rita line, and um, yeah, good fun build, really, really enjoyable, and hopefully one that you'll get out every single year as well. That's the other thing, um, and then add to it. Nice little thing to put on the craft stand at Christmas time. Any questions, Ben? No, I think that's it. All Everyone's good. Happy, yeah wonderful Thanks. well don't forget what i said next next week it's uh steph back on the lathe again practicing the skew chisel and spindle gouge and all those uh spindle turning tools so make sure you you come back for that but if you like what you see give us a thumbs up don't forget to, to share us around with all your friends and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you get uh, told when we're going to be on thank you very much everybody and we'll see you next time <laughs>